Over the last three centuries, treatment of hip arthritis has developed from rudimentary surgery to modern style total hip arthroplasty, which is regarded as one of the most successful surgical intervention ever developed. Please let me take you through the procedure. A total hip replacement is a procedure that involves significant planning and preparation. The patient presents to theater with hard copy films of their radiographs and the orthopedic surgeon will template the potential implant that are going to be used. The template is done on the AP films of the establum and the femur and on the laterals as well. And that will give us an indication of the size of the implant that needed to be used. The patient is positioned on the operating table in a lateral position. The patient position is secured using side supports. Patient draping is by using sterile extremity drapes. And the skin should be completely isolated. After draping, the whole team change their gloves. Marking the landmarks, greater trochanter, anterior superior iliac spine, and the sacrum. The incision goes along side the greater trochanter curving posteriorly toward the posterior superior iliac spine. An incision that ranges around 10 to 8 centimeters is made in a curvy lunar shape along the fibers of the gluteus muscle, incising the skin, subcutaneous tissue, and the gluteus muscle. And then a self-retainer is inserted. After exploring the, the wound, you reach the bursa, the bursa is incised, the circumflex arteries are on view and they should be cauterized to prevent bleeding. Then a hormone is inserted under the abductor tendon and then the hip is positioned in internal rotation and the lateral rotators are visualized now. This is the quadratus femoris which is very big in this patient. There is usually a vessel at its superior portion, and then the hip joint. Once the lateral rotators are identified, go through them with the diathermy, then put the stay suture in the lateral rotators, and the hip is dislocated, and the femoral head is on view now. And you can see very clearly the avascular necrosis of the femoral head, and that's the collapse of the femoral head, and the head is deformed completely. This patient has avascular necrosis or osteonecrosis of the femoral head. Using a canal finder, a sharp instrument to allocate the center of the femoral shaft, then use a curved rasp to follow. This way, before cutting the femoral neck, is a very good method of finding the center of the femoral canal and preventing unintentional varus positioning of the prosthesis because the femoral neck is still intact and that will secure that the canal is broached in the center. And then going by size reamers, I'm reaming size two. It's worthwhile cleaning the reamer and removing any bone that's attached to it. And then after reaming, you can check where the lesser trochanter is. This is the psoas tendon and the lesser trochanter is just over here. And that's our landmark of how much neck cut is necessary. The femoral neck is resected and then the femoral head is removed. And this is a clear damage to the femoral head. You can see that the area has avascular necrosis and that has collapsed. And you can see that the knife goes through the area that's collapsed very easily. So imagine a patient with a weight of around 70 kilograms putting the whole weight through this area. Removing the area that's necrosed, that's all dead bone underneath. This is an area of avascular necrosis and you can see that this is very soft. After reaming, we start broaching. One has to be very careful when broaching a very tight canal, not to fracture. The brooch is solid in the canal and then the real implant is inserted. The implant is short and it's um, covered with spongy metal and uh, hydroxyapatite to become as biological as possible and ensure boning growth. The implant is gently inserted then the leg is repositioned to address the establum. The fat pad or the pulvenar is removed or the remnants of the ligamentum labrum. We start reaming. We have to ensure that we remove all the labrum from the periphery 
because that can prevent securing the cup in position. There is very good bone in the base, and this is a spongy metal cup. The best way to insert it is by rotatory fashion until we bottom out. That's a ceramic insert, which has the lowest friction rate. So we use a trial. We double check with the caliper, our measure, and it's within one centimeter around. The, the difference is only three millimeters lengthening, and that's what we expect. So that's good. It's the femoral head. The aim with ceramic is to have it more closed, and 30-30, 30, 30, 30 of abduction, 30 of flexion, the head should be centered in the establum, and that's achieved. So we repair the lateral rotators. As you can see that the bursa is closed nicely, and that will provide insulation for the prosthesis from the rest of the wound. And that's another layer that can be used to decrease the chance of infection and provide vascularization for the hip joint region. Basically, any kind of repair, restoring anatomy can be of help. So you can see, though it is not minimal invasive surgery, but the wound is very small and it's around 10 centimeters in length. Thanks very much.